Well, sir, 81st Burns Supper, and this is the first time a lot of things have been done tonight, and least of all the, to peace and the people, which is peculiar to our club and has been informed many times. It's really up to the individual on how it's perceived as to how it fits in with modern day life and what Burns would have thought and what he would have written about today's events. There are many conflicts in the world worthy of mention. But I'll concentrate on the UK over the years, just a, a wee snapshot. Not only atrocities, knifings, bombings, shootings, but disasters. These are some of them man-made and some of them natural. And keep on the theme of football with a dialogue between um, Stephen and Bob. You remember these Valley Parade Stadium in Bradford, known as the Bradford City Fire, 1985, killed 56 people. The Ibrox Stadium in 1971, 66 fans died that day. The, Hill, the Hillsborough disaster, 15th of April, 1989, with 96 fatalities and 766 injuries. It remains the worst disaster in British sporting history, and only till just recently did the families get some sort of closure, which was a long time to wait. Another memorable disaster, which had quite a profound effect on me, uh, was a former coal mining village in the Taff Valley, four miles south of the town of Merford Tidfall in Wales, on the 21st of October 1966, when a colliery spoil tip collapsed into homes and a school, killing 116 kids and 28 adults. It became known as the Upper Fan Disaster. And just recently, as last week, or it was earlier on, earlier on this week actually, one of the teachers who saved lives that day actually passed away in her early 80s. And always, especially when young people are involved, there is an outpouring of compassion, empathy, sympathy. People become more benevolent when confronted with these types of disaster, stronger when it is home-born. On top of all this, this insidious viral pandemic, commonly known as COVID-19, which has blighted many communities and countries. But again, there is a will in the communities to phone friends, get shopping, make sure people are okay. And this, folks, is a basic instinct. It's called human kindness. Burns was aware of this even in his day, and it's reflected in his writings, or at least some of them. Robert Burns, his humanity, his wit, ability to capture in words the feelings that we have, we all have, love, anguish, the joy of meeting, the pain of parting. The belief that all men were of equal worth was emerging and challenging the status quo of the times. And this philosophy was at the heart of Robert Burns's personal beliefs. It might be something small and controversial, like a louse or a house or a mouse, a louse or a mouse, two of his famous and often quoted poems. It may be the vulnerability of a daisy or the tentative shoots of spring to a mountain daisy. Burns was also good at offering astute observations and exploring human feelings. I'm not sure I'd advocate too much of that about others or be risk the judgment and the hypocrisy demonstrated in Holy Willie's prayer. But perhaps we could occasionally accept the challenge of paying attention to our own behaviour, accepting the gift of the louse, 
to see ourselves as others see us. I'm quite sure that everybody here watching tonight can think of a poem, a letter, an epistle, or a song by Robert Burns that is personal to themselves that can trigger an emotion or give food for thought to include love, anguish, the joy of meeting, and the pain of parting. And again, accepting the gift of the louse to see ourselves as others see us. Gentlemen, please raise your glasses, my fellow Burnsians, and the toast is to peace and the people, to peace and the people. The deal come fiddling through the tune and he danced all oh, the size, man. Elk and old wife cried, old Mahoon, I wish you luck at the prize, man. And the deal's a war, the deal's a war, the deal's a war, the size, man. He's danced a war, he's danced a war. He's danced a war, the size, man. We'll mark her, Martin, we'll brew her, drink and we'll laugh and sing and rejoice, man. We money a toast to the muckle black deal, the dance, the war, the excise, man. The deal's a war, the deal's a war. The deal's a war, the excise, man. He's danced a war, he's danced a war. He's danced a war, the excise, man. There's a some reels in their fur, some reels in their hog pipes and stress phase, man. But I, the best dancer there came to the tune. Was the deals of all the excise, man? The deals of all, the deals of all. The deals of all the excise, man. He's danced a war, he's danced a war. He's danced a war, the excise, man. Yoo-hoo! Well, Wally brewed a pecky mop. And Rob, and Alan, came to see. Three blither hearts that wee lang nicht, ye wouldna found in Christian Dee. We are nae foo, we're nae that foo, but just a drappy in a ree. The cock may craw, the day may daw, and I will taste the barley bree. Here are we met three merry boys, three merry boys I trow are we, and mony a nacht we've merry been, and mony mere we hope to be. It is the moon, a cane her horn, that's blinking in the lusty sea. She shines so bright, the while as him, but moo, she sooth, she'll wait a wee. Well, first, she'll rise to gain a wall. A cuckold, coward, loon is he. Well, first beside his chair shall fall. He is a king among us three. We are not fool. Wasn't that a few? But just a drappy in a ree. The cock may craw, the day may daw, and I will taste the barley brew. <laughs> Lassie, with the lint white locks, bonny lassie, artless lassie, will thou with me tend the flocks, and will thou be my dearie? -o? Now nature cleaves the flowery lee, and all is young and sweet like thee, so ye share its joys with me, and say you'll be my dearie. Oh, lassie, with the lint white locks, bonny lassie, artless lassie, will thou with me tend the flocks, and will thou be my dearie? The primrose bank, the wimpling barn, the cuckoo on the milk white thorn, the wanton lambs at early morn shall welcome thee, my dearie. Oh, lassie, with the lint white locks, bonny lassie, artless lassie, will thou with me tend the flocks, and will thou be my dearie? And when the welcome summer shower has cheered a drooping little flower, 
Well, to the breathing wood by and bar, at sultry noon, my TV, oh lassie, with the lint white locks, bonny lassie, artless lassie, will thou with me and the flocks, and will thou be my TV? When Cynthia lights with silvery ray, the weary shearers homeward way. Through yellow waving fields we'll stray and talk of love, my dearie, oh, oh lassie. With the lint white locks, bonny lassie, artless lassie, will you with me tend the flocks and will we we'll be, my dearie? And when the howling wintry blast Disturbs my lassie's midnight rest And clasp it to my faithful breast I'll comfort you, my dearie, oh, lassie With the lint white locks, bonny lassie Artless lassie Will thou with me tend the flocks And will thou be my dearie, oh his reply to the tax surveyor is dispatched by William Pitt in 1785 uh, and it was to reduce the national debt a wee bit like the present Chancellor is probably going to have to look at sometime in the future. Uh, so, as your mandate did request, I send you here my faithful list, the goods and gear, and all my grave, to which I am clear to give my aid. And primi, then for carriage cattle. I hate four beasts that gallant metal as ever drew afore a petal. Milana four, as a good old has been, as white and woeful all his days been. Milana hen, as a good gone filly, that aft has broke me hen to kill you. And you know, butter, many a time. And days when riding was nae crime. And hence, when in my wooden pride, I, like a blockhead, bush the ride of awful creatures, say I part to. More pardon all my sins and that too. I played my filly sick as shabby, she's all bedeviled with the spavy. Milana hens, a worthy beast, as air and tug or tow was traced. The fourth, a Highland Donald hasty, a damn red wood kill burny blasty. For by a colt, who colts the whale as ever ran afore a tail. Can he be spared to be a beast? He'll draw me fifteen pun, at least. Few carriages, a hay but few. Three kerts, twa are thickly new. An old wheelbarrow made for token. A leg and bait the trams are broken. I made a poke out the spinnel and my old mother burnt the trinnel. For men, I've three rumbustious boys. Rum deals are thicht and in for noise. A god's went in, a thresher thither, and we davock hods the beast and fodder. I rule them as I ought, discreetly, and often labour them completely. And I on Sundays, duly nightly, I own the questions, charge them tightly. Till faith. Till faith, we dabbles grown to gleg, though scarcely longer in your leg, he'll screed you of effectual calling as fast as only in the dwelling. Aye. Of none and female servant station. Lord save me I for all temptation. I ain't a wife, and not my blisses. 
that you have put any tax on Mrs. And then if Kip folks didn't... And then if Kip folks didn't touch me, I bet the deals didn't touch me. We wins are more than one, more than we were acquainted. Having sent me one more than I wanted. My son says, smirking, dear Buch Bess. She stares her daddy in the face, enough for what your life but grace. But, her, my bonny sweet wee lady, I've paid enough for her already. And can you tax her or her mother? By Lord, you'll hear them all together. So just remember, Mr. Aiken, naked the license out I'm taking. For this day forth, I do declare I'll never ride horse, nor has he mare. My treble on fiddle shank it, I've sturdy bearers, God be thank it. The church and you can tap your hat, it bits but little in your pot. So didn't he put me in your book, nor form a ten white shillings look. This list, with my own hand I wrote it, day and date is under note it. And so to whom all it concerns, subscripts the hook, Robert Burns, Moss Gill, February 22nd, 1786. Thank you. Wally okay. well, Wassell, Dalton Tweed, the spot they call it like I'm Dory. Wally well, was a wafter getting to stood a clue on him, he? he had a wife, sick do, and then, and took her baby with her mother. Like a wife as Wally had. I wouldn't get a button for her. She's an easy, she's got a bit of yarn, and the cat has got a chore the very colour. Five rustic teeth for by a stump, and a clap of her tongue with Diva Miller. A whisping beard about her moo, her nose and chin, they threatened her. Stick a wife as well as head. I wouldn't get a button for her. She's bow hook, she's hen shin, a limping like a home breed shorter. She's twist it right and twist it left to balance fair, and I'll cut for her. It has a hump upon her brace that's one of that sits on her shirt. Sick a wife is what he had. I wouldn't give a button for her. Old Bodrin's burial all set, and where look her face a washing. But Wally's wife is nasty trick. She dicks her grunzy where hushing. Her wally needs, like midden creels. Her face would fill the look in water. Sick a wife is what he had. I wouldn't give a button for her. When o'er the hill the eastern star Tells bocht in time is near my joe And the house and frae the furred field Returns a dauf and weary ho Down by the barn where birkhead buds Would you are hanging clear my joe I'll meet you on the lee rig, my ain kind dearie-o. At midnight hour in Merkist Glen, I drove on there be eerie-o. If through that glen I gave to thee, my ain kind dearie-o. Although the night were ne'er so well, and I were ne'er so weary, oh, I'll meet you on the lee rig, my ain kind dearie, oh. The hunter lose the morning sun to rouse the mountain, dear my Joe. At noon, the Fisher seeks the glen, a down a bun to steer my joe. Give me the arrow gloom and grey, it marks my heart, say cheerio. Take me to on the lee rig, my ain kind deario. Thank you. 
The cattern woods were yellow seen, the flowers decayed on cattern lee. love rock sang on hillock green, but nature sickened on the through faded grows Maria sang herself in beauty's bloom the while, and I, the wild wood echoes rye, farewell the praise, O Balak as he flies again you flourish fresh and fair ye bird is dumb in withering bars again you charm the vocal air but he the last for me name shall burn each arm or flower at smile farewell the bonny banks of air farewell farewell sweet ballock mine here's a bottle and an honest friend what would you wish for mere man walk ends before his life may end what his share may be O oh, care man so catch the moments as they fly and use them as you ought, man. Believe me, happiness is shy, and come not I when sought, man. Here's a bottle and an honest friend. Yes, what would you wish? Mere man walkings oh, before his life may end, or his cares may be, oh, share mine. <laughs> well, well done, Oh, he ya been city brawl. For he for he be come ye by and if ye be and if on the breeze, O Kelly I fought that land and I fought the sea. At him I fought my Antio, but I met the devil and Dundee. On the breeze, O Kelly and if ye had been for I. You wanna be second to you, and if ye had seen what I see on the breeze, oh, Kelly Cantio, the bow that girl fell in a fur, and cleavers got a clang to you, but I had made an so glad on the breeze, oh, Kelly we can't you, and if ye had been, for I be, 
gewordene Pinsel kannt ihr, eine Vieh hat sie vor drei Gesicht und der Briedocke legt rein it's had a lot of time for preparation, as you can imagine. Um, a wee while back, uh, at one of the mixed suppers, I did a different spin on one of the toasts where um, I talked about a lot of Burns' songs, and I thought I'd do a, a twist on that for this. So um, we'll keep it reasonably short, but it's quite interesting, to perhaps, to look at some of the ladies behind these songs. There was... Um, well, there's a quote that says it started with a lass and it ended with a lass. Too many in between to relate them all. The quote is actually from King James, but it fits Burns remarkably well, I felt. He started with El Kilpatrick, finished with Peggy Chalmers. Four main phases in his life, as you know, Alloway, 1759 to 1786. He was in Irvine, as was mentioned, for six months in 1781. He was then in Edinburgh for about 18 months and then Dumfries from 1788 to 1796. During that time, many, many ladies, uh, 12, possibly 13 kids with four, possibly five different women. As they say, he was an expert in the field of love. He was an expert anywhere, wasn't he, and just in a field. But um, in his epistle to John Laprake, he says, There's a wee fault that whiles lay me to me. I like the lassies, God forgive me. For money I plaque the wheel frame me at dance or fear. Maybe some other thing they give me, they will can spare. As Willie said earlier, they started age 15 with Elka Patrick with a wee song which says, Oh, once I loved a bonnie lass, I in love her still. And whilst that virtue warms my breast, I'll love my handsome Nell. Now you hear that oft quoted in Burns Suppers, but it's very rarely actually sung. There's, I think, seven verses to it, and it's a nice wee song for a 15-year-old to write. When he was 16, um, he was away learning some mathematics, and he was doing fine till he looked out the window and he saw Peggy, and then again, that was him off the road with the ma mathematics. He says, We'll gently walk and sweetly talk Till the silent moon shines clearly I'll grasp thy way and fondly pressed Swear how I love thee dearly Not vernal showers to budding flowers Not autumn to the farmer So dear can be than thou to me My fair, my lovely charmer and so that song goes on. One of his most beautiful, To Autumn it's called in some, um, to Peggy in, in some of the others. Um, and again, uh, it, it shows the skill of the man as a songwriter coming through even at that early age. He did a kind of uh, beat thing in um, the Mockland Bells, which says, In Mockland there dwell six proper young bells, the pride of the place and its neighbourhood all, their carriage and dress, a stranger would guess, in London or Paris they'd gotten it all. Miss Miller is fine, Miss Markland's divine, Miss Smith, she's wit, Miss Betty is bra, there's beauty and fortune to get with Miss Morton, but armour's the jewel for me of them all. So even back then, he was starting to show his love for Jean Armour, who was obviously a very, very tolerant woman, as you'll find out. In 1781, he went for his flax dressing period to Irvine. He met Captain Richard Brown, a bit of a womaniser there. Burns is quoted as saying, he was the only man I ever saw who was a greater fool than myself, where women were the presiding star. Um, it was at that time he met another two genes. Genes feature quite a lot in Burns' life. This was Jean Glover and Jean Gardner. And he is quoted as saying, they taught him the joys of women. So you can take from that what you wish. Back to Mocklin, he's about 24, and he starts dancing against his father's wishes um, to polish up his manners. He goes to the dancing class. There he meets... Uh, Annie Rankin, who's the daughter of the neighbouring farmer, John Rankin. And one night he walks her home through the cornfields, which leads, of course, to this one. It fell upon the llama's neck when corn rakes were upon E.O. Beneath the moon's unclouded light, I held a water on E.O. Time flew by, 
with endless heat to tween the late and early oh with small persuasion she agreed to see me through the barley oh corn breaks and barley rakes corn breaks and corn oh I'll never forget that happy and so on you know the rest of that one the rigs of the barley somebody's mic's on i think it's alistair's feeding back there could you mute it please yeah, it's you've got ah, there you go thank you uh he met and fell in love with a girl called peggy and all we know about her is she worked for the family called montgomery's um, he wrote a song for her in Montgomery's Peggy. Um, there's several quotes about the time they spent in church and him trying to woo her, but she was already engaged to someone else. She gently turned him down, but he did write this for her in 1782. Although my bed be in yon muir among the heather, in my plady happy, happy would I be, had I my dear Montgomery's Peggy, dear Montgomery's Peggy. Were I a baron proud and high, with horse and servants standing ready, or to bring a joy to me, his share and we, Montgomery's Peggy, dear Montgomery's Peggy. Like so many of Burns, beautiful gems. It's a fairly short song, that, just the three verses, but again inspired by one of the women in his life. Um, the big one, of course, is Jean Armour, and there's so many written about her that we'll not bother talking about her today. But um, when his father died, he took consolation again, as Willie said, in the arms of Elizabeth Payton, who was the, the servant on the farm, and um, he wrote this after the baby was born. What my baby clutes will buy, what will tend me when I cry, what will kiss me where I lie, the ranting dog, the daddy o, what will loan he did the fault, what will buy the groan and moth, what will tell me how to court, the ranting dog, the daddy o. When I mount the creepy chair, what well, will sit beside me there? Give me rab, I'll seek me mare, he's the ranting dog, the daddy o. Wa well, will crack me to my lane, wa well, will knock me fidgin' fain, wa well, will kiss me all again, the ranting dog, the daddy o. And from that you can see Burns was not really terribly repentant about the fact that he'd uh, bestowed a young lass upon Bess Payton and that his first child, the illegitimate one, Elizabeth, was born. He was supposed to um, be a penitent in the church on the cutty stool, but you can see, I think, from the joy of that song that that's not quite the way he felt. Um, although it was interesting in the Tarbolton supper last week that Cammy and a few others were at, um, there was two tunes written to that song, and that is a joyous one, but there was also one that was a wee bit more sorrowful. I prefer to go with that one, the, the, the joyous one, I think. Um, he did his thing with, with, with Jean. They got married uh, ostensibly. Her father took a fit, tore up the marriage lines, threw them in the fire, sent her away to Paisley. Burns was a bit miffed that she kind of went along with this, although I don't think she had a lot of options at the time. And um, he got in tow, as they say, with Highland Mary. And I'm pretty sure he was fairly much in love with her in the fling that they had together. He wrote several songs for her, Will You Go to the Indies, My Mary, Highland Lassio to the tune of White Cockade. Um, she has my heart, she has my hand, but sacred truth and honour's band. Tis the mortal stroke shall lay me low, I'm thine, my highland lassie, oh. And so on that one goes. He also wrote, uh, on the fifth anniversary of her death, To Mary in Heaven, a very sorrowful song that actually Ross and I used to sing many years ago. Um, and again, through that, his love for that particular woman shines through. The woman also influenced him in, in a humorous way, as you've heard from... Uh, Willie Wassell, which was done earlier tonight, um, where he's talking about uh, really how ugly that woman could be and he'd never get a button for her. And also the henpecked husband, which I asked David to do and he did Kelly Cranky. So we might get back to the henpecked husband a wee bit later. Cursed be the man, the poorest wretch in life, the crouching vassal, 
to a tyrant wife, etc., etc. He could charm the wood from the trees, not just in his song, but his verse. On one of his walking tours with his friend Ainsley, he was in church with his sister Rachel, and he writes, the minister's lambasting them about um, how, how, how poor sinners they all are, and he writes on the back of Rachel Ainsley's Bible, Fair maid, you need not take the hint, nor idle text pursue. T'was guilty sinners that he meant, not angels such as you. And you can start to see how he gets across to the women here. It's a far better line than, are you dancing, are you asking? Yeah, you know the thing that we do these days. Um, then in his Edinburgh period, <coughs> excuse me, in his Edinburgh period, he gets in Tawi Agnes Macklehose, which as far as I can read anywhere, was not consummated, but he did write lots of songs for her, and he did, of course, give her maidservant uh, <laughs> a, a baby in, in the way past, as it were. Um, a Fond Kiss is a very well-known one for that, but I also like one that, that Doogie used to do, which is... Now in the green mantle blithe nature arrays And listens the lambkins that bleat o'er oh, the braes While birds wombo welcomes in ilk a green shore To me it's delightless, for nanny's a war To me it's delightless my nanny's a war. So in the song, she's the nanny, and he's telling the story there about how his life has changed, and he goes through the seasons saying, without her, none of them mean anything at all. And then, of course, his uh, timeless song of farewell, Aphon Kiss, which is still sung to this day in, in many places. Moving on, he met Margaret Chalmers, or Peggy Chalmers, uh, again, for her, fairest maid on Devon banks, fairest maid on Devon banks, crystal Devon winding Devon, will that lay that frown aside and smile as thou wert ought to do? He wrote that nine days before he died, so even at that time he was still thinking of the lassies. May Cameron was um, a servant he, he got with child. Jenny Clow was Nancy's servant that I mentioned. When he moved to Dumfries, um, Jean Jaffrey was a youngster. He got in. Uh, in tow with then. It's hard to know how romantic he was. She was only 15 when he met her, but he wrote for her one of the songs I do. When first I saw fair Jeannie's face, I couldn't tell what ailed me. Her heart went fluttering pit apart. Mine, they almost failed me. She's icy neat, say trim and tight, all grace around her hover. One look deprived me, oh my heart. So I became her lover, she's I, I say blithe so gay, she's I say blithe and cheery, she's I say bonny, blithe and gay, oh good night were her dearie. And again, that's a nice light-hearted, lot of fun in that, and he, again, inspired by this woman. Um, the next one on his list, I guess, was Anna Park, the golden locks of Anna, uh, who was the barmaid at uh, the pub in Dunfries. She was 19, he was 31, she had a beautiful voice, and he wrote, he, he was pretty much in love with her, I think. Yestrina had a pint of wine, which he um, describes as his favourite love song. Some of you have heard me doing it. I'm not going to do it just now. But um, she kind of fades away. She has the baby and Jean offers to, to raise it. Um, and, and, and not much is known about her in the future. Um, Cloris, I mentioned earlier, Lassie with the Linton White Locks. Again, she was a youngster, but there's 24 songs written for her. She was a, a huge impact on him, a, a, a huge muse. Um, and uh, romping through this, towards the end of his life, Jesse Lures, the girl across the road who nursed him, Wert thou in the coal blast? Oh, lay thy loof in mine. Here's a health to Ain who laid low dear. Um, these were all written for her. Um, I think it's summed up nicely by this letter he wrote to George Thompson, the publisher. Do you think the sober gin horse routine of existence could inspire a man with life and love and joy, could fire him with enthusiasm or melt him with pathos equal to the genius of your book? No, no. Whenever I want to be more than ordinary in song, to be in some degree equal to your divine ears, do you imagine I fast and pray for the celestial emanation? Tout au contraire, I have a glorious recipe. The very one for his own use was invented by the divinity of healing. When erst he piped to the flocks of Admetus, I put myself in a regimen of admiring a fine woman. And in proportion to the adorability of her charms, in proportion you are delighted with my verses. Maria Riddell, who, or Riddle, who he admired for her wit and, and intelligence, asked Burns why he learned Latin. He replied with a smile that he knew all the Latin he needed. Omnia vincit amor, which is love conquers all. And I think that sums up the man 
Um, although he's chastised perhaps for his loose ways with women, it was a thing of the time, it was what happened. And if he had not fallen in love as many times as he did, we would not have this myriad of love songs that we have today. And a large proportion of Burns' songs are love songs and come from those very women. Therefore, gentlemen, I would ask you to join with me in the toast to the lassies. The lassies. I think Uh, thank you. Well done. Excellent, Kev. Superb. Cheers. Run, Kev. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Right. Uh, we normally follow that with Green Grover Ashes, though, as a community song. We can't really do it as a community song. I've done a lot of singing. I'll just do a couple of verses of it, just so we can take the box that we sung it as part of the club. Um, the last verse in this is the beautiful one that I like. Uh, and in fact, David Purdy, who was doing the Toast to the Lassies at Tarbolton, quoted this very verse. Old nature swears those lovely dears are noblest work she classes all. Apprentice hand she tried on man, and then she made the lassies yep. There's naught but care on every hand, in every hour that passes so. What signifies the life of man if it weren't for the lasses? Green grow the rashes, oh, green grow the rashes, oh. The sweetest hours that I spent, I spent among the lasses, oh. The worldly rates may riches chase, riches still may hide them more, and when at last. They catch them fast, the hearts can ne'er enjoy them more. Green grow the rashes, oh, green grow the rashes, oh, the sweetest hours that I spent, I spent among the lasses, oh. All nature swears a lovely dear. Her noblest work she classes all Apprenticed hand she tried on man And then she made the lasses all Green grow the rashes all Green grow the rashes all The sweetest hours that I spent I spent among the lasses all Green grow the rashes all Green grow the rashes so well, the sweetest hours that I spent, I spent among the lessons. And there we have it. <laughs> well done, Kevin. Uh, well done, thanks. Kevin. The spring of 1788, Burns was in Edinburgh, where he had spent the winter. And he was... The second edition of his works were uh, published then, and he was paid for it. And so he, he, he leased a farm in Ellisland in Dumfries. And in March of, of, of that year, he went directly from Edinburgh to Moss Gill, and he married Jean Armour. Uh, this time, the father of, approved. And... Um, Shortly after the marriage, he moved down to Ellisland to prepare the farm to bring Jean and the family down there. But of course, it is work cut out because there wasn't even a house on this farm. He had to build the, a, a cottage to start there. And while he was there, he wrote the song, I Love My Jean. And in, in that song, you know, the, he, he said, he, I he liked the, the, the west wind. And he liked the west wind because Jean, uh, Jean was still in Moss Gill with his mother and sister. And the west wind blew from Moss Gill to Ellisland, bringing Jean's love to him. So uh, it was called, sometimes called the honeymoon song. <laughs> he's in Ellisland and she's in Moss Gill. And um, there's another thing about that song, Burns only wrote two verses for it. But the singer always sings four verses. 
The other two verses were written by a, an Edinburgh music seller called John Hamilton. So you can judge for yourself when the second two verses come up, whether there's a, any deterioration in poetic value in these two. So here is, I love my gin. <laughs> of all the earths the wind can blow, I dearly like the worst. For there the bonny lassie lives, the lassie I love best. There wild woods grow, and rivers row, and money's a hell between. But day and night my fancy's flesh is ever way my jean. I see her in the dewy floor, I see her sweet and fair. I hear her in the tuneful bird, I hear her charm the air. There's no bony floor that springs on fountain shore green. There's no a bonny bird that sings, but minds me, oh my jean. <laughs> Though bloggy wastling winds blow soft among the leafy trees, the gentle gill tree hill and dale bring him the laden bees, and bring the lassie back to me that's icy, neat and clean. Ye blink o' her would banish care, say lovely is my jean. Oh, sighs and bows among the nose, he passed atween us two. Her fond to meet, her weighty pert, the day she gaed a wo. The poor's a boon can only ken to whom this hurt is seen. That name can be so dear to me as my sweet lovely Jean. The weaving green with our defeat, the legs we repair near, and the moonshine bright as a ruby. Tyrannic man's dominion, the 
Christ puts my joy in the mulberry Let let me Come, let us pray a gladsome way and view the charms of nature. Rustling corn, the eggnog, and every creature. Gently walk and sweetly talk to the silent man clearly. I grasp my wings and fondly call. Swear that I love clearly. Maternal showers with budding flowers, not a tongue can be thou my Beautiful job. Oh, oh, okay, here we go. Up with the colors of Dyser, and the lads of Buckhaven, and the Kimmers of Largo, and the lassies of Leaven. Hi, through, ka through, for we hey muckle ado. Hi, ka through, ka through, for we hey muckle ado. We hey tales to tell, we hey songs to sing, we hey pennies to spend, and we hey pints to bring. Hi, ka through, ka through. <laughs> We hey muckle a do, hey ka through ka through, for we hey muckle a do. We live all your days, and then they come behind, like them do the same, and spend the gear they win. Hey ka through ka through, for we hey muckle a do, hey ka through ka through, for we hey muckle a do. Up with the cars of Dyser, and the lads of Buckhaven, and the Kimmers of Largo, and the lassies of Leaven. Hey, ka through, ka through, for we hey muckle a do. Hey, ka through, ka through, for we hey muckle a do. Thank you, Kevin, and uh, it's not easy to uh recollect all the events and the issues that I've dealt with in the last four hours since you set off on this memorable journey. <laughs> I have to say at this point though, I think all of us would pay particular thanks to you for all the efforts you made to get everything happening in a in a, a reasonably competent <laughs> form. I know there's been one or two issues with the uh, the, the videos, clips and so on, but Kevin, well played. You've tried your very, very best and nobody can find any fault with what you've done. To you and to Wooly Miller, who stitched it all together in the first place, well done, Wooly. Oh, yeah. Well done. Well done. Well, the we're, we're extremely privileged to have Wooly in our midst and running the show for us, even in these COVID times, he, he still keeps in touch with all of us. So, Willie, thank you. And to Alistair Dees, our, our club president, who has come back, had a period of illness recently, and has still found the time in, in the midst of all of that to, to stitch together a programme tonight. Maybe stitch together is not the words you want to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can do that with in, in terms of medically over the last, last few months. But to Willie, Kevin and Thompson uh, and Alistair for putting us all 
thing to get. Well done, guys. It, it's, a, it's a marvelous show on your part. Right, okay, let's let's go to vote thanks to those that have actually taken part. First of all, I'd like to go all the way back to the start of the evening. I suppose it's kind of yeah, remiss of me if I don't make mention of him, but to my son, Stephen, Lieutenant Colonel Garmany, who's out there in Germany, who uh, went and got a haggis and Senelager. For those uh, military people in our midst, uh, they will know Senelager is not the place it once was in terms of the military, but there's still a place you can buy haggis. So Steam tracked it down and got a haggis to address the haggis tonight, which was, was really good. And I thank him for that. And well done, Stephen. Um, well, even though he's drinking my own whiskey. <laughs> 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 like gripped a wee bit, but that, hey, okay, that's a, that's we're putting that in the background at the moment. But uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, to you, Stephen, for taking the time and trouble to go and find a, ha a haggis in Germany and add it to your event. Okay, to all the performers tonight, well, well done, guys. Uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to perform on Zoom on video, you, you, you've not got the instant feedback. You could say, well, if you make a mistake, you don't. It doesn't matter as much because there's not all these people shouting at you. Uh, but still, it's important if you're a, if you're performing that you have some sort of feedback, and you didn't get that tonight immediately. Uh, although I, I did look at some of the chat and put and, and David McDonald, you got run down to the lowest. Uh, anyway, that, but that's. <laughs> That's an arm. I was. I, I think I'm. I'm probably talking about more in views on here's a bottle. Um, so um, the, the thing is, guys, it's been a pretty special night, a pretty different night. But we've all worked it, given our best on our performances, and and I have to say to everybody, right from from Frank Sanderman and you know right the way through to Jim uh, Chalmers, all Tom Hickman, everybody. You've done a great job, guys. Well done. You know, I, I could single every single person. John, John's uh, inventory, the whole gamut. Well done. You did a great job, and that that says a lot for our supper. Um, now, in the midst of a global pandemic, and uh, yeah, everybody's looking at their shoes at the moment and saying, "Oh God, you know, we're never going to get through this." But you got to remember, the guys that formed this club were coal miners. They were digging coal in 1940, and the world had gone into a second world war. They had no idea what the outcome was going to be. There was no plan. I mean, yeah, maybe Churchill thought, OK, Christ, we've got the boys back for Dunkirk. We're going to win. But the boys who were digging coal in Bohill didn't they actually have that in the head, right? So... They still got on with life and they went and they won their way through it and they got out at the end of that and then they created lives and we all benefit from that. That's why we are the community we are. And to be honest, guys, we're in the midst of a global pandemic, but we'll get through that. We will be the same Bowhill People's Buns Club in a year's time as we were 30 years ago if we stick together. Because there's a one saying, guys, you cannot put memories together unless you've created the memories in the first place and it's up to us to create the memories so guys this has been a wonderful experience i have to pay tribute again to willie miller to kevin and to alistair Dees for putting this together guys as the boho people's buns club as we sit here tonight this is us we are going to win this battle we are going to be back in a room together celebrating a bird supper one year for now, we'll all be vaccinated because we're all the demographic that gets the vaccine in the next <laughs> two months, for Christ's sake. And we'll be sitting there. For yourself. And, we'll <laughs> and we'll listen to Bill Dawson singing of all the years. We'll listen to Jock Rich, Richie, who I was... Jock, that was a brilliant Westland wins. Jock, you're doing that at the next supper. So, guys, let's hang in this together. I know it's hard at the moment. But the Bowhill People's Birds Club is a special organisation that we've created. Let's hang in there and we'll get there. And next year, we'll be back together. And
acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind should old acquaintance be forgot for old lang syne and for old lang syne oh for old lang syne we'll take a cup of tea oh for old lang we twa here and about the breeze Three mornings and we'll die But seas between us breathe An old lang syne And for old lang syne For June Oh, for old lang syne We'll take a cup of kindness yet Oh, for old lang syne and my trusty friend and gives a hand o' oh, thine and we'll talk a wreck get what he wants for all lang syne for all lang syne for all lang syne we'll talk a cup of kindness yet for all lang syne for all I'm saying, a jewel, for all I'm saying, we'll take a couple of kindness yet for all.